So chat two, we are at the authentic Sri Lankan restaurant, the Curry Leaf at the Hilton Colombo with uh, Uma Ra. Yes. I got it right this time <laughs> with Uma Ra. Uh, a topic close to her heart is actually all about mental awareness. Uma Ra, mental awareness as in, as in, in what context? It could be in any context. Um, I personally know, we have personal, I think everyone of us, at some point in our lives, we go through something. It could be depression, suicidal thoughts, it could be, I don't know, frustration, whatever that escalates you to a certain point in your life where you just want to give up on life, you know. So, I mean, there are ways to handle such, such um, situations. I think as a people, um, if we actually get together, we can actually help out other people and prevent so many deaths, unnecessary deaths and um, situations in life, unfortunate situations in life. It's just to be are there you, for somebody. Are you a trained psychiatrist or a psychologist? I'm not trained, but I do have experience. Personal experience? Personal experience, yes. Have you been depressive, suicidal? Um, I don't want to go into detail, but yes, depression has been... The issues in yes, life. Yes, have, I, I have had issues in my life and postpartum depression was one. Um, something I thought that would never happen to me. Um, but, you know, the, the, the funny thing is, you know you're depressed, you're not happy about something. But then everybody, you know, the face that you show the entire world is that you're happy, so you're content. That is the trap. That is the trap. And realizing that and understanding the concept behind that, you know, that's the hard part. So how does one live within the trap and still get out of it? What I learned was to open up and speak up about it to somebody because it was just one particular conversation that I had uh, with my sister and then my mom because I, I didn't want them to feel disappointed or I didn't want them to feel, oh, okay, she's going through something, you know, they need to feel sorry for me. I didn't want that. I want them, wanted them to see the good side of me and be happy, okay, she's doing really well, she's happy with her life and all of that. But that was not the case. I was struggling inside a lot. Um, so the key to getting out of it was, I still remember how relieved I was after that, you know, 45 minute conversation that I had over the phone. I was in Hong Kong and my parents were here. And I knew that I had to open up to somebody. And in order to do that, I knew that I had to condition my brain. It's within me. So I have to condition myself and say, I got this. I can do this. If I do this, this is going to happen. This is going to, you know, fall into place. And which actually did. It wasn't a, a quick thing, you know. It wasn't quick recovery, but under, it's about understanding yourself also at the same same time and appreciating life a little bit more. So is, you're talking different levels of perhaps intelligence or awareness. So is if everybody's not able to understand the issue mm -hmm. and to address yeah. the issue of whatever nature uh, objectively, then what happens? See, See I'm clouded, for I example. Know. I don't know where to turn, I'm stuck. Yeah. I can't talk, I'm shy, I'm scared, but I have this thing. I'm blinded and... Yeah. I understand that, I understand that, but fortunately for me, um, I think because of what I went through, I can understand a person when I talk to them. So I have this thing where when I'm talking to somebody, it's not that I'm judging the person, body language. Your body language can speak volumes um, about a person. So just being comfortable and to have a normal conversation, that makes you feel comfortable to have a conversation with me. So if you can open up to me, that means I have done something. I've opened up or paved some sort of way for you to at least try and make an effort. This is about gaining confidence. Yes. So you could open out to your mother, Asha, and your sister. Anyone, yes, because actually. I have a very close But family. not the whole world, obviously. Not the whole world. I have things, I mean, you know, personal stuff, but then there are, and it's, my dad always says, not everybody needs to know what's in my pocket. Uh, how much I have in my pocket and how much I don't have in my pocket. It's your personal life. You need to understand the difference between what's personal to you and what is, you know, letting everybody know about your life. And especially being in the limelight, it's really tough. <laughs> now talking of limelight, your, your, your sister Omar, yeah. She had a huge setback in her personal life, yes. which she has overcome yes. and she has moved on. Were you there for your sister? I think I was and I'm glad that I was because when all of this was happening 
um, I was not in the country, so I had come back, moved back to Sri Lanka. That's when I started the academy and my husband and my son, they were all here. So I'm really blessed and because I couldn't, um, I was not even there for her, her wedding. I couldn't come because I was with my son and I was stuck. I couldn't come. So it was really sad, but I'm grateful and I'm so thankful for the fact that I was able to be there for her during her worst time in her life and to share that experience with her. I'm sure up to a certain extent, she was also lifted, you know, you know just by knowing that... You are very protected girls. Yes. So being, uh, being a protected girl with parents looking after you, when you're thrown out there, it's tough to, to, to get onto your feet back again. It is. Okay. And we are a very emotional family. <laughs> I have heard that you say you cry very fast. I know. Yes, we are very emotional. Yes, and, I've heard that. Um, especially where my sister's situation, of course, I'm really, I'm really proud of where she is today. Because I don't think anyone of her age has been through what she has been um, in her life. And she's a really, really strong woman. And I, I love her, I adore her, I respect her for the fact that she conditioned her brain. It was a tough battle. She still struggles on and off, but... She's, she's human. She's, she's human. human. It's a normal thing. Um, but depression is no joke. Mental, mental going off in your head is no joke. It's, it, uh, we, we always look at a person and say, okay, look at the guy, he's a Mongol guy. Or, you know, that's the Sri Lankan thing that we have. I think we need to this change Mongol that. guy, Mongol is just a horrible word. Even in classrooms, even in classrooms. In schools, yes. In schools. yes, yes. So we need to ch change that uh, perception. I mean, it is, it is a condition that a person is going through. We need to change our perception about it. We are Vision Care. You spoke about autism also. Yes. Any child, any human being, uh, being autistic, do you think it's a, it's a setback in life? No, it's or is it a stepping stone to a different kind of a life? Um, it's definitely, um, I don't find them different. They're human as well. We do mistakes. We have issues sometimes, you know, we don't want to keep our watch a certain way. Those are autistic um, signs. Yeah, so, yes, it's all straight. so if that's the case, you know, you have an issue. So I shouldn't associate you. You know what I'm saying? But autism is, it's just like any other thing. It's a problem. It's, it could be cancer. It could be something. So just because a person has cancer, you don't avoid the person, but you comfort the person. They're differently able children. Exactly. Exactly. They're not different. How does one remove the stigma? I so you can't change the whole nation's consciousness issue, but at least where can one start? I think this has to start from home. Firstly, the parents need to take initiative and teach the right values and teach the kids the right things about life. It's not about me, mine, ours, and that's it. You know, life is about us, we. That is how we evolve. That is how we go ahead in life. And as a country, we can do certain things and go above and beyond. But if people have that, you know, that, that, that mindset of like, no, it's just us, make a mage, it's not yours, or you're different, I shouldn't associate you. We will never get out of any problem that we have. It starts from home. So that's me being very selfish. Yeah. It's all about me and my people. Yes. Yes. Sometimes it's just me, not even my people. Yeah. It's the unfortunate truth. <laughs> so you talk of change, change coming from within. It's within. But are we talking about a minority, unfortunately? I don't think it's a minority. I think it's a majority. At no, the of moment. those who would want to be changed. Oh, change. yeah. Of course, of course, we need to change that perception somehow. So then again, aren't we stuck at square one? I'm are, just arguing with you. Of course, we are stuck in square one. So that's why we, we, personalities, the schools, the principals, the teachers, the institutes, they need to understand this concept first. I have first-hand experience teachers in class shouting at the children. And these are the kids who go astray. They are the ones who end up in jail. They are the ones who end up with the drugs, drug addiction and alcohol and, and all of that. You know, it's us. We need to support each other. We have to start from home, with, from our kids. Three simple things. Learn to say thank you. Learn to say please. And learn to say I'm sorry. sorry. Those are the three hardest words. The three golden words. Thank you and please and, and sorry. sorry. We don't because we have ego. We have a lot of ego. We need to get out of that. We need to... Sorry is the hardest word to say, no? Sorry is the hardest word to say. But 
it's not really hard if you condition your brain to keep saying it for you to you know, keep mentioning sorry please help you know whatever you as a mother what kind of life or what kind of future do you wish for your son ryan who's only 7 years old i want him to be successful in any field that he's good at and i will support him all the way i don't expect him to be a doctor an engineer no let him choose what he wants to do with his life because i know that he's going to be successful that way he's not pressured he's going to enjoy his job he's going to love to work not stress about the job <laughs> right so uh He's only seven years old. He's seven years old. So he's got to uh, think for himself and choose for himself. Yes. And your husband thinks the same, Rifki. Of course. We we, you know, we we complement each other um, a lot. We compromise as well. I think um, in a marriage, those are the two important things that you need. You need to learn to compromise. You need to say the three words: sorry, thank you, please, um, and. you know let go of that ego that you have and have empathy and and communicate properly and when the husband and the wife are happy the your child is kids automatically happy. goes down to them so on that note of positivity of uh, i'm sorry of please and of thank you the three magic words i do agree with you and totally uh that brings my chat to to a close with umara singh vansa the beautiful curry leaf restaurant of the of the hilton colombo Um, we meet you again next week. Another guest, same hotel, a hostel, and of course, Ramani Furniture Salons, our hair and beard partner. You can start on your what's oh, the I salad? Will. On your salad, um, the yeah. potato salad. There's um, lady ladies' fingers. fingers, which is very unique, and then there's a tuna salad as well. It's very Sri Lankan. I love the spices. Amazing. So authentic Sri Lankan cuisine, curry leaf, Hilton Colombo. Cheers, everybody. <laughs>